going to introduce uh, Professor Kanadopoulos, a uh, well-known, uh, internationally well-known um, laser vision uh, specialist, and uh, he will talk about the inner bias and the rate tracing. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, pretty happy to be here. I would gladly skip this talk if Ahmed gives me that plastic surgeon's phone number because uh, I want to look like that lady in their 70s. <laughs> I think that's the best take home message. Uh, it's great to be here. We heard some uh, fascinating news on the cataract surgery front. How many of you are doing eczema laser treatments? Myopia, that's it. Can I pick up cards from the rest of you so you can send me your refractive surgery patients? Because that's some very, very important stuff to share with you. It's a lot of material. Just to, to keep a note, we for three years had a meeting, eight hour meeting with very high level surgeons to understand these principles and apply them in their practices. All of this work now is done with a touch of a button. And that's what I'm gonna share with you today. Uh, thanks to Alcon and thanks to their uh, brilliant uh, refractive surgery lab in Erlangen, uh, Wavelight. Uh, I want to thank them for allowing me not just to be here and make this presentation, but actually run this uh, fascinating machine. So let's let's go running. F refractive surgery planning today. Obviously, we have to speak to the patient as we heard before, uh, visual acuity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But ophthalmology is not just that anymore. Look at all of this equipment. Uh, wafer apparometry, topography, biometry. Um, we've uh, contributed to the literature how you can easily uh, map cornea epithelium as a key element of every, every ophthalmology evaluation. Even if somebody's coming just for glasses, you need to know what their epithelium looks like. And we've worked a lot in what normal dry eye and post-refractive surgery epithelium looks like and reported it. Now, Innovise is the trade name for this fascinating technology that has two scales. It has a diagnostic device, um, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, and it has a artificial intelligence that can collect the data from this diagnostic device and compute your perfect or more accurate or whatever you want to call it, refractive surgery numbers to treat each individual eyes. Now, the standard of care internationally, both in my practice in Athens and in New York City, in our office in New York City, we have the exact same equipment, the refractive uh, surgery suite by Alcon um, is using the standard clinical refraction. That's what I trained on, that's why I train my residents in New York at NYU, that's what everybody uses. The patient selects the numbers, we put the numbers in the machine, and, and that's what we treat. Now we know that we endeavored in wafer guided treatments and topography guided treatments, and now this is a revolutionary new edge ray tracing. So I'm just introducing. My path through this is treating irregular eyes. Why am I talking about irregular eyes in a normal eye myopic approach to treating patients? Because this pathway, kind of like the path I took with my better half, Christiana, here yesterday in the desert with a camel, through every rough path, you learn something. And what we learned, and this is work from uh, 2005, the pioneer work when we started work using topography guided to enlarge ablations, treat irregular corneas. I've devoted basically most of my academic careers treating natural conus and irregular corneas. What we learned from these irregular eyes is that topography guided is able to address better um, the uh, amount and axis of cylinder in irregular eyes and in regular eyes as well. And this message became confirmed by the US FDA study with topography guided. Uh, this is several years ago, and topography guided for many years was the magic bullet for refractive surgery because it was able to normalize a cornea. So who cares? This is a non-topography guided treated cornea, 2020, fantastic. And this is the other eye of that same patient, 2020 as well. Fantastic as well. Which one would you prefer be your eye? I mean, we're all refractive surgeons here, even if most of you don't do LASIK. It's a shame, but anyway. Uh, this eye still has residual astigmatism, which is also present in the backside of the cornea. So this patient, or this eye, in the future is going to ask for that cylinder. Uh, this eye does not have that cylinder. And this, the secret is this eye can see 2010. So there is a little lesson to be learned in using topography guided, and we've introduced TMR using topography guided and adjusting that uh, clinical refraction, that manifest clinical refraction with uh, the topographic amount and axis of cylinder. 
uh, we're doing uh, finishing a uh, study with Alcon and comparing 50% TMR to 100% TMR. But I'm just presenting these very, very eloquent data from our TMR study because to do this, you had to spend a day with me. How boring is that? Talking about nine hours on patient examples, looking at all these maps, going to the device and calculating what is the perfect ablation to treat. Now, all this work is done by just pushing a button, just like I'm switching my slide here. And I'll explain to you how. Ray tracing principle is not new. It's an old principle. And basically, it, I don't think the word or the title ray tracing explains well what we're doing here. What we're doing here is we're approaching the eye optically from two sides. We're tracing the rays from the device, the diagnostic device, through the air, through the tear cornea interface that we know is the, the strongest refractive um, media in the eye, through the cornea stroma, out the backside of the cornea, underlying that, because there's some refraction taking on place there, into the aqueous and on the anterior surface of the lens. That's one side of the ray tracing. And now we have a second ray tracing step going backwards, using the wavefront to trace from the retina through the vitreous cavity, through the backside of the lens, underlying that backside of the lens, it has refractive power through the lens material. It does have refractive power in younger patients and the anterior side of the lens. So these two uh, ray tracing components are considered in this device to be able to give us the data. So the magic thing about this device is that it uses a commercially available device by Oculus. It's been around almost a year. It's named Sitemap by Wavelight, who picked up the device. This device can do on one box cornea topography uh, in lieu of uh, tomography. It can do wavefront churning, uh, uh, heart rate check, um, not churning, uh, wavefront analysis, and action link measurements, as well as iris recognition data. Um, and these data are used by the artificial intelligence to do serials of computation. So action link measurement, total eye wavefront and cipher imaging. So total cornea uh, data are used to go into this key element. Now, the Innovite software, besides what I'm gonna show you, uses a new laser spot interface distribution and sequence. We know that most lasers today in the market kit followed Wavelight's example of using a overpowered mid-periphery laser spot ablation, 20 to 30% more, to reduce spherical aberration. Now that uh, has become a standard of care, and Innovice carries a new spot distribution to cure some of the shortcomings of that brilliant technology that's now the standard of care internationally. Also, the transition zone has changed. As you can see here, what was in standard uh, laser for wavelength, and this is true about most lasers, uh, was 0.75 for myopia, and now it's 1.5 um, for uh, 1.5 if myopian cylinder was treated. In Innovise, a standard 2.5 transition zone is used as well. Um, again, I don't think I'm going to, in the next six minutes, be able to, to share with you my enthusiasm about this technology. Visit this YouTube address. I have a very lengthy tutorial going through several case examples on what we, we used to do manually and what this device does automatically. Um, and in essence, you need to get four, at least four good wavefront maps, and we're seeing them here, with an at least 7.5 pupil. So for patients who don't reach that 7.5 pupil in your office uh, situation, you can go through with this. Uh, then you need four good, and good is defined by the device as, uh, as far as its reproducibility, uh, scientific images, and then four to six images of action link. All of these measurements are in one box, the site map, map uh, device. And at the same time, it does capture with infrared, iris, and limbal anatomical elements to be used for segmentation adjustment by the X500 Exerman laser. So, um, as I mentioned before, two key steps. Step one is ray tracing from outside, meaning the device, the diagnostic device, to the interior uh, lens surface, and then using the wavefront data, data for this uh, step two, uh, ray tracing from the retina, again, to the interior lens surface. There's an extra tiny step, which is very important. Step one and step two, declare what the tilt, meaning the parallel of the lens and the parallel of the cornea are, which is also able to be corrected by this device. And tilt uh, is an important aspect as well. This is now what the uh, platform looks like. The brilliant thing is that this, this 
uh, adds on to your pre-existing EX500 laser for laser. So it's just a software upgrade for the laser. It uses the same laser, uh, different spot distribution, but that's done by the software. You don't have to change your laser. And now all the previous uh, pearls with the wavelength technology are there to use as well. Custom cue, the topo guided treatment, stream light, and Innovise becomes one of the options. And uh, this is what you see in the screen. Different thing is, is now once you move, uh, as I mentioned, the sitemap device uh, captures the site rotation uh, data, which in the past were uh, uh, captured by the Vario topography device. And this is what it looks like. Uh, what I think is brilliant, thank you, Wavelight team, is now your treatment, the default treatment, is the Innovise treatment, not the clinical refraction treatment. So it, 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 it really helps the team uh, not to omit uh, adding the, um, the calculated data. And this is the calculated data by the device, which is the same with the treatment data. You can, of course, intervene here as a surgeon and change the sphere, uh, the amount of cylinder, and the cylinder axis, if you wish, and all the other uh, uh, adjustment uh, modules on the uh, device. This is a case example, 29-year-old male with, uh, as you see here, significant myopia. He's about a minus five with two doctors with astigmatism. <coughs> what we would, what we did up till now is use all these data. The goal, the green light to do treatment on this patient for me is to look at the epithelium maps and see in that eve epithelium for two reasons. Number one, my refraction is uh, reliable. And number two, the patient has been off contact lenses for a significant amount of time. I don't go just by history. It can be a month out and you can still have warpage here in the epithelial maps. Um, it can be, they can tell you they've been off uh, two months and they took the lenses off right before they walked into your office. Uh, sign fleet imaging, we use the Vario up till now as the backbone of our topo guided TMR treatments. And um, all these data with the site map are calculated to give us uh, the uh, actual treatment. Uh, we treated this patient, ended up 2010, and proof of concept, this is the site map, the site map measurement a month after the LASIK treatment with Innovise. So this is the proof in the pudding. If it works, your data a month later should be zero, and it is zero. And we do have an explanation why this patient is 2010, because not only we treated the best corrected before 2020, not only we treated the refractive error, but we optimized on the cornea, all the refractive faults of the eye. Um, these are the clinical data up till now with uh, uh, using this technology, very impressive, mainly in uh, lines of, uh, of vision uh, gained. Uh, we can see here how fifth, half of the eyes gained two lines of vision, and we saw the similar data with using our TMR triple guided um, uh, experience, but with much more aggravation in Innovise. This is done within six seconds by the press of a button. Again, uh, very, very important clinical data here. 48% uh, of the eyes uh, gained the uh, corrected distance visual acuity. And the treatment range is similar to what your laser can do. Uh, it can go up to 11 doppers of myopia, four and a half doppers of cylinder, optical zone up to seven millimeters. Uh, of course, uh, some of the uh, blocking steps in using this device, and I wanna be perfectly honest with you, we cannot scan one out of every 20 patients because uh, we will not get re uh, reliable uh, wavefront data, so you can't proceed by using the sitemap and the Innovise uh, software for those patients. And also, I mentioned before the pupil dilation issue. If uh, the patient's pupil won't dilate over 5.5 um, millimeters in the scotopic positions you're, you're imaging the eye, then you won't get reliable data and the machine will not allow you to go through, which I think is fair since you cannot talk about wafer data in a four millimeter pupil brain, it's, it's absolutely fair. Uh, but uh, 19 out of 20 patients in our experience are able to be imaged. Uh, another last uh, rule of caution is if tilt is over 10 degrees, we will not proceed with the treatment as we feel correcting tilt between the lens and the cornea of over 10 degrees on the cornea is maybe a big leap and as we need to learn more about that and how safe that is for our patients, but we've only encountered that in one patient out of the 50 we treated so far. So that is, uh, uh, these are the impressive data, how tight the numbers are, 
Uh, again, uh, the impressive data and correct the visual acuity. I'm closing with laser refractive surgery today for those of you who don't do LASIK or PRK or SMILE is extremely impressive. I cannot see why patients who wear contact lenses don't have refractive surgery. Uh, ray tracing, the, the data presenting today with Ditovice uh, offers not only a new spot delivery profile, but um, is treated on the vertex by the sign fluke image uh, determination. Is using Hartman Shack wavefront data to image the eye backwards and frontwards, uh, and also uh, take into account the tilt. Uh, I think that uh, this technology is, is fascinating and uh, it will offer busy practices who were a little bit timid in going through all the algorithm and pushing the envelope to higher visual acuities become very efficient and reach the level of uh, a very uh, astute laboratory. Uh, this is all I have for you today. Thanks for giving me the opportunity and I uh, hope you all enjoy the beautiful city of Marrakesh. My first time here is brilliant. Thank you so much. Very impressive results uh, with this uh, new multimodal uh, technique, uh, but then integrated into a single machine. And uh, I think also shows that that uh, normal eyes are not as normal as we often think they are. They already have high order aberrations, which you can correct with these. And also, that I think that with irregular corneas, you can almost treat them like they're standard eyes. Absolutely, I can't agree more. It, it's impressive that we learn to deal with uh, regular astigmatism as uh, a regular functioning optical system in the eye, but angle cap up proves wrong. Uh, even the angle cap of 100 microns makes the most regular astigmatism act as a prism for the patient and create coma. It does uh, confuse them in picking up a refraction. It's a long, long story. You'll have to come and spend nine hours with me to explain it to you, or you can get the Edovise device from Alcon. It's your choice. <laughs> I think that's a good investment for time as well. Um, then I'll uh...